Okay, so now we know how to convert carboxylic acids to acid chlorides, to anhydrides, and to esters. Let's talk now about how to convert them into amides. So this will be carboxylic acids to amides. Okay, all right. So uh, again, we've got this problem where um, if we try to cook up a carboxylic acid with an amine, um, we're going to have a really hard time doing that uh, because the, the amine will simply just deprotonate the carboxylic acid. Uh, now that can work if you if you heat uh, that mixture up um, or wait a really long time. There, there is actually a pathway where those can combine, um, but it's usually too slow and, and too unfavorable for um, synthetic purposes. So we really want a way to do this in a much more rapid and, and uh, convenient fashion. Um, so we have several options, and a lot of these are very similar to the ester formations. So the one way we, that we could do this is to uh, go the acid chloride route. Again, we're going to take a carboxylic acid, and we're going to basically launch it all the way up to the most reactive acid chloride state, and then we can come down to wherever we want. Um, so this is a very simple and straightforward um, idea. We will just simply first use our uh, thionyl chloride to convert the carboxylic acid to the acid chloride. And then at that point, we're ready to simply throw in whatever amine piece we want, whether that's ammonia, a primary amine, secondary amine, uh, all of those will be uh, typically quite, quite uh, appropriate. And then that will get us to our, our amide there. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind here is that um, the byproduct of this process is still HCl. So um, in the ester case, that we said that this is okay, and you can just get away with just putting in the alcohol and the acid chloride. You'll generate HCl, and as long as your molecules aren't sensitive to uh, that strong acid, there's no problem. Um, you can get away with it. Um, or you can throw in a base like triethylamine to just basically mop up that acid and make it so it's not so um, harmful. In the case of the amidation though, this actually is um, important because what's going to happen here is that uh, this HCl that's generated is going to react with the amine that is in our flask. And so this will go to um, the ammonium salt. Okay, so we will get this. Which, and what that means is that you have to have at least two equivalents at least two equivalents of the amine, okay? Uh, because if you only have one, you're only gonna react 50% and the other 50% will be caught up as the ammonium. Um, or you can also add um, a base, a tertiary amine base, which won't be able to do the amidation, but will be able to react with the uh, HCl that's generated. Um, so just keep that in mind that your two options are to add at least two equivalents of your amine reactant. If you don't care about, if it's simple, you don't care, um, that's that's fine, methylamine or something like that. Um, but if you do care about it and you only want stoichiometric, um, then you have to add an exogenous additional base um, in the form of usually triethylamine or something similar. Okay, that's really straightforward. I mean, this is this is super reactive electrophile. It means are very nucleophilic, and so this this reaction is usually quite rapid um, and efficient. Okay, well, uh, by the same token, we might as well just uh, note that you can do the same type of strategy um, with an acid anhydride. So uh, if you were to convert a carboxylic acid to an, an anhydride, you can then come to the amide, um, or in some cases, some anhydrides are commercially available. So you could just purchase um, one of these. So acetic anhydride, for example, uh, you can just purchase this um, already made. And this will work uh, usually very well uh, for the purpose of um, forming an amide. Um, and so we treat it with, for example, a cyclic amine. Uh, we can absolutely acylate that, um, that nitrogen uh, forming this amide. Um, and now, again, just like we saw uh, with the acid chloride, we are going to generate an equivalent, in this case, of a carboxylic acid. It's this piece coming off with that proton. Um, and this is, of course, still acidic enough to protonate the amine. Uh, so you're going to have the same the same um, acid base uh, chemistry that's that that happens here. So um, H2 and then the carboxylate. Okay, so so this is what you're going to do. So you still need um, either excess amine 
or or you need to throw in the tertiary amine base to to the anhydride formation as well okay <clears throat> all right so acid chlorides and hydrides those are both quite quite efficient sometimes though neither of those are appropriate uh, so you know especially if you're working with somewhat complicated molecules uh, acid chloride formation um, you know we talked about uh, the bazooka of reducing agents um, acid chlorides are kind of like the bazooka of, of um, acylating agents they're, they're really really reactive and sometimes your molecule just can't handle that um, or you need something that's just going to be a lot more tame um, so there are actually just a phenomenal number of much milder and selective ways to to couple acid and amine to make um, amid bonds uh, and we're only going to talk about one of them, um, but there, there actually is a whole world out there um, of these types of, of things. The one we're going to talk about is something that's that's called the reagent called DCC, okay? And this stands for dicyclohexyl carbodiimid. Okay, carbodiimid. Okay, it's a, a bit of a name right there, a uh, bit of a mouthful. Um, what this is, so the, the carbodiimid part is the thing that matters. And this is a pretty interesting looking functionality. So it's this kind of thing. And then the, the dicyclohexyl is just sort of the substituents that happen to be on the nitrogens. Um, and uh, to be honest, the, these things can change. Uh, and that's, you, you get a lot of, a lot of uh, specialization by changing these groups and, and giving them different reactivities. The one we're going to learn about is just the very sort of uh, standard one where we just have cyclohexyl groups, but chemically they don't really matter that much. What matters right here is the carbodiamide. Okay, that's the, that's the carbodiamide. And uh, if, you, if you look at this, you might notice that this actually looks like you just made a, a, a imine out of both of the CO double bonds of carbon dioxide. Okay. Uh, and the important thing to know here is that this is going to be electrophilic at that central carbon. Okay, that's how it's going to operate. So the overall reaction that we can do then is to take a carboxylic acid and amine, whatever we want to use here, whatever pieces, um, and we're going to uh, treat this with um, DCC um, to, to basically couple these two together. And that will that will uh, basically um, just simply make make the amide uh, bond, and then the byproduct here is going to be this species. So I'm gonna I'm gonna abbreviate cyclohexyl as CY. So there's cyclohexyl group here. So the carbodiamide basically grabs that oxygen, um, and and you get out this, which is dicyclohexyl urea okay and this actually ends up being a, a a big sink of sort of an energy sink that that pulls away um what is formerly water right so you take this oh and the proton from the amine that's h2o you're basically using that to to suck up water and drive this whole thing forward okay how does this thing work let's talk about the mechanism so what we're going to do here is engage our carboxylic acid first with the, uh, the dicyclohexyl amine. So again, I'm just going to abbreviate cyclohexyl with CY. Okay, so there's our DCC. And what we'll do is we'll have the DCC grab a proton from the carboxylic acid. That'll give us our carboxylate. And then we have got our protonated DCC. Okay, so there's, it's like, it looks like an aminium ion, right? So it's sort of activated. Now this is a good nucleophile and this will then be able to add to the DCC. Okay. And so once we do that nucleophilic addition, we get to an intermediate that looks like this. Okay, and you might notice that there is at least a little bit of similarity here to an acid anhydride. 
right? So in an anhydride, we have another carbonyl and then an R group here. Um, so this is different, but it's not so terribly different. Uh, and the point is, is that this piece here um, has the potential to be a reasonably good leaving group, okay? So we're in a position now to have that oxygen um, be a part of a, a very stable molecule if it can be ejected, okay? So at this point, we've got what's called an activated ester, just meaning that it's ready to do the nucleophilic uh, acyl substitution. So now we're in a position to engage our amine to undergo nucleophilic attack at that carbonyl. Okay, so that addition can happen. Okay, so when we get to this kind of intermediate, um, and uh, if, if, we, if we get to this intermediate, then we're immediately going to allow this to collapse, collapse out then, and we will get to uh, our, our species here. So this is our, um, our amid, and all we have to do here is to take care of a proton. So we'll just take a base and, and allow that to uh, deprotonate, and that'll give us our amid product. Okay, so there's our there's our amide product. Um, now th it's important actually to talk about this other piece that came off. Uh, this this piece that just got ejected, and in fact that piece can serve as the base. Okay, so this piece becomes that base that pulls off the proton. So the other thing that's that's being spit off here is this thing here. Okay. Um, and so this is actually a, a, a stabilized oxygen anion, right? There's resonance forms here. And so basically what's going to happen is that this proton is going to wind up being the thing that protonates there, okay? And that's how we get to, at the end, our dicyclohexyl urea. Okay, so... Uh, we could we could just have drawn this as the base, um, but it would just get a little a little crowded there. Um, but that's the thing that can ultimately end up with that proton. Okay, so DCC ends up being a a, a powerful and yet a rather mild way to activate uh, amides, um, uh, activate carboxylic acids to form amides. Okay, now I would just point out um, the fact that the use of DCC also works to form esters um, and in fact other things as well so you can take a carboxylic acid um, and you could treat this with dcc um, and then whatever alcohol you want and that same um, intermediate that we just talked about um, can be uh, reactive with alcohols and so you can also go to form um, esters as well using dcc so it's a mild mild approach to um, to that type of transformation Okay, so we have multiple ways now to make um, make uh, amides as well, uh, either the the acid chloride, um, or we can uh, use uh, we can go through another type of intermediate um, and hydrides, um, or we can do this much more sort of mild and selective way uh, using the DCC coupling.